This episode is brought to you by Blueprint Health. Blueprint Health is a measurement-based care platform for mental health providers. You can find out more about them by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprinthealth. And also this episode is brought to you by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com, the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. They're who I use in my practice. Check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the podcast. This is session number 202 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, I'm Gordon Brewer. Glad you joined us and glad you are with me on this journey. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, glad you stumbled upon us and glad you found us and hope you'll come back for more and also take time to follow us or subscribe wherever you uh, listen to your podcast. So happy to have with me today on the podcast, Jen Uren. And Jen is, uh, I ran into at the podcast movement back in August in Nashville. And uh, we did something that they called a lightning round, which I guess is kind of like speed dating for podcasters. But anyway, found out about Jen and the work that she's doing. Um, and she has a podcast called This Mom Knows. And um, she's also got a background with therapy and, and counseling and that sort of thing. And so I wanted her to be on the podcast and for us just to talk about kind of this whole life work balance kind of thing. Um, I know for a lot of folks um, over this past year, uh, past two years almost now with COVID and that sort of thing and working at home, it has really um, created a lot of stress for a lot of people, particularly those of us in private practice. And, uh, you know, i I know that probably the vast majority of people in private practice out there are moms and also dads. But, um, you know, finding that balance between being a parent and setting those boundaries between what you do in your office or what you do online with your work as therapist and balancing that with with home life is an important piece. So I'm looking forward to to you hearing my conversation with Jen as we talk about um, those kinds of things. I think it's important stuff. And so before we get to Jen, though, I want to take a moment to invite you to think about joining a focus group with me. I've got my next cohort uh, starting this month as this comes out in November, and I'm taking applications for that. One of the things about the focus group or AKA mastermind groups is it gives you a way to really get some support and community around your practice of finding a group of people that you trust and can um, kind of put things on the table about your practice growth and learning from others and learning from things. And I'll be facilitating the focus group and um, it's going to be limited to just about six or eight people, uh, probably just six to tell you the truth, because I find that when we have a smaller group, we can spend more time on talking about the different topics and things that we're working on. So if you're interested in joining a focus group with me, uh, you can fill out the application by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group. And you'll find out more about the cost of joining the focus group and all of that there. Um, one of the things that I will say, and you've heard this a good a good bit in this past week's episode, is that um, Every time I have gotten involved in a focus group or some coaching or mastermind groups, um, it has absolutely been worth the return on the investment of not only my money and putting it into that, but also the time that I put into it. And I've developed so many great friendships and developed some good colleagues through that process over the years. And so I invite you to check it out. 
Go to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group to find out more about joining my next cohort. I'd love to have you. I'd love to hear from you. So um, also, before we get to my conversation with Jen, I'd love for you to hear about um, Blueprint Health and Therapy Notes. Blueprint Health is a measurement-based uh mental health platform for those of us in practice and gives us a way to uh, measure what we're doing. And so I want you to find out more about that. And also Therapy Notes. Therapy Notes has been a longtime sponsor of the podcast, and I can't do without them. They are who I use in my practice. So before we get to my conversation with Jen, I'd love for you to hear a little more about Blueprint Health and Therapy Notes. as your practice grows, the systems and processes you have in place will keep your practice running smoothly. That's why it's important to have an electronic health record system that is specific to mental health providers. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance all right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. They're who I use in my practice. And did I mention that they are one of the top-rated EHRs for mental health providers? Their support is also second to none. So be sure to check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. That's therapynotes.com. And this episode is also brought to you by Blueprint Health. You know, one of the best ways to serve clients in your practice is through measurement-based outcomes. In fact, more and more third-party payers, aka insurance companies, are demanding measurable outcomes. And with more and more emphasis on good mental health, having a way to measure your outcomes just makes sense. Introducing Blueprint, the measurement-based care platform that administers scores and charts hundreds of symptom rating scales to give clinicians deeper insights into treatment progress. Ultimately, by helping, helping behavioral health providers to grow top-line practice revenue, increase clinician satisfaction, and deliver more effective care. So be sure and check them out by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health. And by going to that URL, you can also get your first month free. Again, that's practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm so uh, happy for you all to get to know Jen Uren. Jen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. And uh, Jen has a um, another podcast, my, a Mom. This mom, mom Knows. This Mom Knows. I wanted to yes. say Mom Knows Best. But Jen, happy to have you with us. And as I start with everyone, why don't you tell folks a little bit about your journey and how you've landed where you've landed? Yeah. So um, big picture is that I am a people pleaser. And so I would say yes to everything people asked me to do, but I never got into the practice of saying no. So I just piled on thing after thing after thing. And I found myself buried with overwhelm. I was not keeping up. I was struggling and I was really not feeling like like I was enough. I was, I was failing. It felt like on all fronts. And as a mom, I really felt that with my kids. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of had this stretch where I, I, I kept feeling like I was supposed to be getting caught up on projects. And I kept going, I just, I'll do that later. I'll do that later. 
And then God surprised us with a um, literally a surprise adoption of two babies. So I went from three kids to five kids with no preparation, no idea that we would be doing this. And I went from overwhelmed to almost broken. It was a lot. But it's sometimes when we break is when we can heal, right? And when we heal, we sometimes heal stronger than where we were coming from. So Mm -hmm. in that process, um, I learned a lot about relationship. I learned a lot about trauma with these two precious little babies that joined our family, the secondary trauma that it caused for our kids. Um, But we ended up um, coming out of that with a whole new parenting style. I understood that. One of my key relationships was with myself and that if I wasn't nurturing the skills and gifts that I had, that I was not modeling good things for my kids. I was not taking care of myself. And so I started to um, lean into my own strengths, which were um, finding systems and figuring out how to do things well. And I kind of tamed the the beast of home and got things running well again. And that led to me saying, I I can help other people do this. This is what I know. And I love connecting people. So that's the heart behind this mom knows is that what I know I can tell people what other moms know they can share and together we've got it all covered. Um, And so that's what I do now is I, I help and encourage mompreneurs Um, help them find the systems that are going to work well for them and help them focus their time so that they can really thrive as both mom and entrepreneur. Yes. Yes. I love that. And I, I guess one of the things that kind of struck a chord with me um, is just this whole, um, as we were talking about a little bit before we started recording, is just this whole life balance kind of thing. And I think um, just in our world as therapists, the people that most of the people that listen to this podcast anyway, um, we, they hear me talk about and hear other guests talk about systems and processes. We apply those to our business and to our practices to make them run smoothly. But I think, as you discovered, we got to do the same thing in our home life and our in our families and that sort of thing, particularly when we're trying to juggle either working full time or de- doing all the best stuff that we do, do yes. we like to do and want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing that can be, I think, especially tricky sometimes for therapists because they tend to be relational is that systems are task oriented and it can be really easy to think that, um, that they're at odds with each other. When in reality, if you find a system that works for you, that works with your personality, with your rhythms and routines, it's actually going to create space for those relationships and nurture that. And so they're not at odds. They can really work together well. Right, right. Yeah. So what are some things that you've learned from from just your experience of, you know, raising five kids and and just this whole life work balance thing and what you're learning from others as well? Another, yeah. yeah, that's a big question. It's a really big question. <laughs> yeah. So well, one thing I have learned is that um, while there is some truth to birth order and things like that, each child is so different and unique. And when I came into parenting, I thought, okay, this is how I'm going to do it with all my kids because I am a perfectionist by nature. So it's all or nothing and it's consistent but kids aren't that way. And so I've had to learn to um, shift my perspective from their entire life to let's try this for six months <laughs> for the next six months. This is what we will do. Um, so, so that's one thing I've learned is that they're each just so different and unique and it requires different things of me. Um, but the other thing that I have really learned is that um, when you work with system with rhythms and routines, you can find things that everyone can have buy-in into. And so as moms, a lot of times, and even as business owners, we can be the bottleneck to a process. Mm. And if we can remove ourselves as that bottleneck and have something that works with everybody, um, then we have, we have some things that just become automatic. They flow, they happen. And uh, it, it shifts a lot of burden off of us. And it lets us all enjoy time together, downtime together, or engage in that 
um, that task of, you know, doing dishes after dinner um, corporately. So it's not just one person's task or responsibility. So that's the challenge though, right? Taking all these different personalities and then pulling them together under something that's going to work for everybody. Um, But that's the fun of it too. (laughs) Right, right. So what tips have you got on being able to do that? Yeah. So I think um, a lot of times we are, in addition to being the bottleneck, sometimes we're the stumbling block and we are our own worst enemy and we can't see what's going on because we're too close. So sometimes it's helpful to sit back and become an observer. Watch what's happening in your home. Watch who tends to do what, how they tend to do it the traffic patterns that helps you figure out, you know, where are we going to put the coat rack? Where do we going to keep the shoe basket? You know, if people are are walking in the front door, having those by the back door doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, So becoming an observer has been really helpful, but if you're too close to it, have someone else come in because a fresh set of eyes can really be um, no pun intended eye-opening. They can see Mm -hmm. things that we can't see. Um, they, they notice things that we might not notice in ourselves, but in our family as well. Mm-hmm. So it's really shifting into this role of observer, I think, is, is a helpful starting place to figure all that out. Right, right. I guess one of the things that I, I'm reminded of is just the importance of, of being able to, to reach out for support. Yeah. Um, because I think, uh, you know, I, I think in the... Um, in one of the previous episodes, I talked about the importance of having supports and, um, you know, being part of like things like mastermind groups and having Mm -hmm. colleagues that you, that you can rely on to be just vulnerable with and to talk to about things. And I love that idea of having just a fresh set of eyes coming in and seeing something that can be, uh, I think we can, we can have things so close and I'm holding my hands up in front of my face real close, but have things so close that, like you said, can't, can't see the forest for the trees Yeah, uh, because we're just so close to it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love that idea of asking for help too, because sometimes there's things that we don't mind doing at all and someone else hates and we can swap. Um, I remember when my, my, firstborn was a baby. I had a friend who loved laundry. Don't ask me why, but she loved laundry and she'd pick up my laundry and do it. That was her gift to me for about six weeks when the baby was little. Mm -hmm. And so there's things like that. She's like, I'm already doing my own. What's twice the load. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can, you can find people that you can ask for help from, but you can swap. You can say, I am good at this and you're good at Mm -hmm. that. So let's help each other out here and offload some things. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. So what what are some other things that you feel like just thinking about um, those of us that have busy lives and being able to to kind of get a handle on the overwhelm? Yeah, well, it's it's our um, it's our time. It's our things and it's our thoughts are really the three things that consume us and and Mm -hmm. and define all of it. And so. uh, I actually just recorded today and I'll be launching uh, in October the an episode on the 80-20 rule and how that is really this, how we want to use that to um, give margin boundaries and space in our life so that we have the capacity to say yes to the unexpected. We have the capacity to think and create. We have the capacity um, for something new to come into our, our space without it bursting at the seams or overwhelming us. And um, that overwhelm is when we don't take the time to purge, you know, purge our time, take off the things that, that don't belong there or delegate to someone else. When we don't take the time to purge our space and uh, get rid of the things that we no longer need, use, or enjoy, or even purge our thoughts and say, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to put a stop to what I'm watching because that's consuming my, my thoughts. I'm obsessed right now with this show or something, or even Mm -hmm. just saying, I'm going to take time to do a brain dump. So I don't have to think about it and I can focus. Um, But a lot of overwhelm is because we're beyond capacity and we don't have that space. Yes. Yes. I love that. I, I, I love the idea too, of the brain dump, because I think a lot of times what happens is, is gets, our mental space and just even our physical space 
um, get so cluttered that we lose sight of what's really important or what really matters to us. And yes. So being able to kind of, uh, I have this, I use this metaphor a lot with clients is, um, is that if you can imagine your, your, maybe your garage packed to the ceiling with just stuff yeah. and you're, you've got the task of, of uh, clearing out that garage and organizing it. Well, what you have to do is just pull everything out of it and take it one piece at a time and decide what to do with it. And so I think that's, as you were talking about doing a brain dump, that was kind of the metaphor that came to mind for me yeah. and just thinking about trying to trying to get hold of, get a handle on the brain. Yes. On the brain. Yes. Yeah. All the stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And when we get to that point, that's when we can start to really focus on what we're doing, whether it is spending time with our family or doing business related stuff. And I think that's what um, gives us that sense of, um, you know, a lot of people call it the work-life balance, but really it's an integration because, you know, it's never mm-hmm. going to be perfectly in balance, but we've got to figure out how to make them fit. And some seasons mm-hmm. are going to fit better than others. And some seasons you're going to do more of one than the other. But um, when we can focus and use our time well, we feel like it's going well. And that's right. what gives us that sense that that all is is balanced and integrated. Right. Right. I love that. So tell tell folks a little bit more about um, This Mom Knows and how that came to be for you and how you developed that whole um, concept. Yeah, well, thanks. It's kind of a process. Um, I, I thought I wanted to be a blogger and I tried writing, but I um, also discovered that I am not self-motivated. I am externally motivated. So the moment anybody else said, hey, Um, can you do this for me? I would drop my deadline because my deadline didn't matter and I would do what they wanted me to do. And so um, I got to thinking about that and I thought, well, I still am a connector. I, I love to, I'm relational. I love to talk to people. And so I flipped it and I said, let's do a podcast. And, um, and that I discovered works well, because if I tell you your episode is going to drop on November 3rd, it is going to drop on November 3rd and I will have so that that was good but i have enjoyed um talking with with these other moms and what i started to discover was when i i was broadly talking to moms about things they knew i began to see a thread coming through that um a lot of what moms knew they've they've had a hobby that they've turned into a business or they they started they met a need and it turned into a my focus then um on actually mompreneurs because they're different from work at home moms who have an external employer. Um, They're different from working moms who go away every day. They're usually moms who are not necessarily sitting down with, you know, eight to four hours, you know, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They might be, I have an hour and a half, I'm doing this. And then I'm on with the kids with this thing. And then I'm back to work doing this kind of thing. And so it's a different, Mm -hmm. it's a different type of lifestyle. And uh, it requires a different approach um, when it comes to, to getting things of home and work running smoothly. Right. So that's kind of how it all came about. It's, it's been a progression. Um, from just moms in general to, to focusing on mompreneurs and helping them do both things well. Yes. Yes. I like, I like the way you um, conceptualize that. It's a, again, it's something I have in the past talked with clients about just my therapy clients about that, that kind of that dichotomy of, we want to put things into kind of either or yeah. categories, you know, it's like either, either, either I have to focus on my work or I've got to focus on my family and they're not really linked, but in reality, it's not an either or proposition. It's a both and yes, and that they are linked and that there is overlap and, yes. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And moms, especially, I mean, no offense to the dads, but mom's brains do not turn off from these things. We're constantly thinking through our kids' logistics and all this other stuff. And so there's, Mm -hmm. there's a mental burden on moms that just isn't quite there the same way on most dads. And that, Mm -hmm. that means there's never a true separation. So the more you can make things run smoothly, so you can focus, especially when you're a mom, the better Mm -hmm. it is, um, 
for you when it comes to being productive at, at work and not dropping the balls that you want to make yeah. sure don't get dropped. Right, right. So, so what are, what are some tips that maybe you have for helping somebody begin to, I guess, maybe either conceptualize or begin kind of making these changes that you're talking about? Yeah. So I, I think the first thing is um, you want to, like I had said before, um, just be an observer, watch what's going on, start to study some of the rhythms and the routines that happen in your home naturally um, so that you can leverage what's already happening. Um, that would be one, one thing to start with. The other would be kind of think through what is it that you spend more time and energy avoiding that if you just did it, it would be done. Um, mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it's laundry. For some people, it's meal planning. For some people, it's, it's you know, bill paying. And then start to say, what is it that I don't like? Is there something we can do? So with bill paying, it might be that you can get everything fairly automated. So all you have to do is download and reconcile and go, okay, it's taken care of. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to log in and do all this stuff. For meal planning, um, I hate to cook but I cook every night for my family because I figured out how to make it all work for me. Um, I use uh, an instant pot and a lot of days mm -hmm. you'll find that I have prepped dinner when I make breakfast and it's sitting there on a delay start. So when dinner is ready, I show up with everyone else because it's going to cook itself. Mm -hmm. um, once I figured out some things like that, it, it, it really flipped some things around. I didn't avoid dinner prep the way I used to because it was done. I had a plan. So that that's a big part of it too, is having a plan and sharing it with your family so that they understand what's going on and uh, um, pulling them in wherever they can, when it's age appropriate, if they say, Hey, we're out of, you know, I don't know, laundry detergent, add it to the list, make it their responsibility mm -hmm. to add it to the list and not yours. And so just, just these little things to pull other people in so that you're not mm -hmm. the bottleneck. And then, and this is important, try it for a little while and then reassess and figure out, is it working? And if it's not quite working, it might just be that it needs a tweak. It doesn't need an overhaul. So figure out what's the little tweak that you need to make, because when a system works for you, it does the work, but when we're trying to work a system and it's not natural, it's not, it's going to fall apart. It's, it's too right. much effort. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a matter of the, uh, instead of, um, the business running you, you run the business. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. So what, one of the things that you mentioned, I think is a lot of, is, would maybe fall under the the category of setting boundaries and mm. learning to say no to things. Yes, yes. And that, um, so we talk about this concept of our plate, right? I, my plate is full. But what we don't talk about often is how big is our plate? How mm -hmm. strong is our plate? Do we like our food to touch? Do we like it piled up? What kind of, you know, margin do we need around there? And so um, when we can understand that, it starts to give us a framework through which we can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have a resource called Your Best Yes. It's, it's a process of figuring out what are your priorities so oh, that wow. you can say yes to the things that you want to say yes to and no to everything else. And, uh, and that's the thing we have to practice. Um, we are a lot of people say practice saying no. I think we have to practice saying yes, because we want to mm -hmm. practice saying yes to the right things and not everything. And mm -hmm. so therefore we are practicing saying no, but it's not, um, it doesn't have to be a negative. It can be a positive because now we're doing the things that matter and that fit and not the things that people ask us to do. Right. Right. I love that. Tell folks more about um, how they can get in touch with you and get uh, get their hands on some of these resources. Sure. Absolutely. So um, my website is thismomknows.com. And if you're interested in that best yes filter, it's thismomknows.com slash yes. Very simple. Okay. Um, my podcast, you can find at that same website, thismomknows.com slash podcast, and you'll find all the episodes are there. Um, I drop an episode every Tuesday and uh, 
Um, yeah. And I, I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram. I love to connect with people. So if anybody listening is like, you know, I'd like to know a little bit more about, you know, how I could figure out a system or whatever, please feel free to, you know, connect with me through the website or um, through any of my social media accounts that you'll find there as well. Wonderful. Well, Jan, it's been great to, to have this conversation, and I'm sure we'll be talking again. I, she, uh, I was checking out your website um, before we started, and a lot of great resources there, and I think it will resonate with a lot of folks that are listening. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy that uh, Jen joined me for the podcast and be sure to check out her resources on this mom knows best dot com and also check out our podcast. I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to some of those episodes. Um, you know, this whole life work balance is something that I think is important for us to continue to pay attention to just as private practice owners and those of us in this space. Um You know, self-care is something that can be neglected, and I know a lot of times we don't necessarily practice what we preach in our own in our own lives. I know I've been guilty of that in the past myself. But again, thanks to Jen for for joining me on the podcast and be sure and check out her materials and that free resource that she mentioned as well. I think that sounds uh, like a really cool resource. And you can find links here in the show notes and the show summary to get to those easily. And um, also, as a reminder, be sure and uh, check out and learn about the focus group that I'm getting ready to start. Um, and if you will go to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group, you can find out more about that and also fill out an application um, and um, see if it's going to be a good fit for you and for me and all of that sort of thing. So be sure and check that out. And also, as always, big thanks to our sponsors of the podcast, Blueprint Health. They are the a measurement-based care platform for pri- private practice owners. Uh, you can find out more about them by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health and also Therapy Notes. They are the leading electronic health records system for mental health providers in private practice. They're who I use in my practice, and they are the one of the top-rated electronic health record systems for our industry. So be sure and check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And you can get two months of their services for free by using the the promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N. So be sure and check them out. Thanks again, folks, for joining me. I hope that you will Take time to subscribe and follow us wherever you might be listening to the podcast, whether it be on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, and any number of other podcatchers out there. Um, you can find us on most most any of them now. So take care, folks, and I look forward to you hearing from my future guests. We've got a lot of great people lined up. Take care, folks. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.